And our first story, we're going to travel to another landmark that's withstood storms, the physical kind, and I know you're familiar with it. And it's about 170 miles south of where I'm standing right now. The Biloxi Lighthouse. It's another one of our links to the past. One of the reasons the lighthouse was built was the fact that this was a seafaring town. And because it was a seafaring town, uh, you had a lot of commerce going in and out of Biloxi. Uh, even from New Orleans, we had the uh, paddle wheels coming and bringing tourists as well as goods to the, to the city. So when they built this lighthouse in 1848, it became that beacon that they knew they could come into safe harbor by looking at the light and following the light. The lighthouse itself, it was lined with bricks. That's the way these things were set up. Instead of building the brick type lighthouses, they decided to build this iron one, but they reinforced it with brick on the inside, all the way up, uh, all, all the way to almost to the top of the 55 stairs that goes to the top where the light is. They chose cast iron. Um, it was an experimental material at the time, and they were trying to decide whether it was actually gonna work well for lighthouses. We were the only the third one built in the United States and actually the only one, the first one in the Deep South. And then in 1860, a hurricane had eroded the foundation of the lighthouse so bad that it was leaning two foot off of center, make, putting it out of service. So it remained like that until after the Civil War. Uh, right after the Civil War, around 1866, 1867, the metal lighthouses in the United States, the uh, lighthouse keepers, uh, for the U.S. government decided that they needed to paint these things to, pre to prevent the rust on them. So they painted them all black, which is fine and good, but what happened was as, uh, in the daytime they were landmarks as well for the fishermen and the uh, shrimpers and the boatmen of the, of the day. Uh, so they couldn't see the land uh, where the lighthouse was because that white stood out against the tree background. So they, they asked them to turn it back, paint it back to white. You know, there were stories for years that it was painted black um, in memorial for the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, but that was just a story that was made up many years later to tell the um, tourists coming up from the, down from Chicago to make them feel better about the whole Gulf Coast and being in the Deep South at the time. It is actually the only one of that series of lighthouses that, can, that survived all of the storms. You can actually go up into the lighthouse and you'll notice, one of the first things you'll notice is their watermarks. Um, after Hurricane Katrina, when we did the, the restoration, which was about $450,000 worth of work on the, build, on the structure, um, was to add a hurricane exhibit and actually paint it the high water mark for different, not every storm that's hit the lighthouse, but some significant ones over the years. The lighthouse was hit by a hurricane just a few years after it was built. And so there was a, we've got a mark for that. It really puts it in perspective. And then you, heard, you have the, the line for Hurricane Camille, and then you get the, the mark for Hurricane Katrina, which is you know another six foot above that. So it really kind of helps you understand what the, how different the storms have been over the years and their impact on the coast.
The lighthouse where it is today, it's in the middle of um, U.S. Highway 90, but at the time it was put there, it was actually on a, that was a jetty of land that stuck out, just a kind of a rock, basically a rock pile, and they built the lighthouse right there on that sand jetty, and there was a bayou right next to the um, lighthouse where the water would come in, and it was a little deeper here. So it made kind of the natural channel coming into Biloxi from Ship Island, whereas where your deep water port was. So that was the reason it was chosen to be right here. When it was originally built, there was no road. Uh, back then, there was no beach roads. There was uh, paths and uh, shell roads that went to people's houses, but there was no uh, municipal road on, on the area. It wasn't until uh, in the late 1800s that they began to build roads next to the lighthouse. In the 1950s, that's when they four-laned the, the highway and built the lane south of it. And to do that, they had to do a lot of fill uh, of sand all the way to the beach where the beach extends now. It's also uh, in the 1930s, they built a seawall, and that's when they did some of the extension they did on the uh, uh, soil south of the lighthouse. So it became the first lighthouse that sat in the middle of a, of a major highway. It really is the symbol for Biloxi because that really is an identifying structure. There's no other lighthouse quite like it. And plus, it is a sign um, and a symbol of resilience for our, uh, our community. After Katrina, when you saw all of the damage, and you just saw piles and 15, 20, 30 foot high piles of debris everywhere, and you got to this site, and all of the structures around here were gone, but the lighthouse was still standing. I think the community took it on as a sign that, yes, we can survive and we will survive. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads. Down Mississippi.